Hello and welcome to this episode of Let's Talk, where we zoom in on the practical implications and the next steps around the bigger Congress sessions here in Milan 2024. And in this episode, we are zooming in on the session Beyond the Limits of Heart and Soft Tissue Augmentation, the next level. My name is Garrett Heikoop and I'm proud and honored to be joined by a chair from that session, Giovanni Zucchelli from Italy. Giovanni, welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yes, and also one of the speakers is here with us, Alexandra Rendon from Mexico. Welcome, Thank you Alexandra. So much. Thank Glad you. to be here. Glad to be here with you. Now, Giovanni, the whole theme of this third day in Congress is beyond the limits. So obviously this big session is also beyond the limits of augmentation, both heart and soft tissue. Let's start at the very basics. Why do we need to talk about the limits or even going beyond the limits? Yeah, it's nice because, you know, soft tissue segmentation has always been considered something that it's only a part of the treatment that comes after bone augmentation in order to, let's say, put something better because bone augmentation sometimes modifies the soft tissue not in the right way, so we have to repair with the soft tissue segmentation. The objective of this is to understand what is the possibility of soft tissue augmentation only to solve many situations and maybe without doing any bone augmentation. So it's not really a limit, but it's something that it's not established yet. That's why we say beyond the limit, because it's beyond the evidence. Exactly. And as I understand now, the title says heart and soft tissue, but mainly you zoom in on the potential of soft tissue to yeah. actually the Stay away from heart. Yeah, the, the two lectures theoretically should make the Distinct. limits and what is beyond the limit of soft and hard tissue. Alexandra, who is mainly to speak about the soft tissue, and the, uh, Egon, who is going to speak mainly about hard tissue. Excellent. But the objective is to understand what we can do only with the soft tissue without, and this is, you know, very challenging. It's exciting. Like, Alexandra, you are the representative of the soft tissue limit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of development currently in that field? Where, where, where are we with science? So uh, regarding developments, I think we're going back to basics. We're exploring the potential of native tissue, autologous tissue from the patient, because uh, I think it has been, not only me, but in science it has been overlooked because it hasn't been considered as stable as bone augmentation. So uh, right now we are currently develop developing protocols to see how the soft tissue behaves in time. And this is part of something that I will present in my lecture. Exactly. There's one thing that slightly confuses me because on this table we've talked a lot about soft tissue and the potential soft tissue, but also about the drawbacks of the, the second site, especially after harvesting the mm -hmm. extra morbidity. Why would we not just fix it with bone or are you saying, you know, it, we are speaking about two different areas. Help me. Uh, if, I try, if I can try to help you and the uh, people is going to listen to this is bone is important for the implant. Mm -hmm. While soft tissue is important for the patient, you know. So that's completely different because, you know, yes, the bone is important because you have to place the implant. But then from the bone to what the patient sees, there is only soft tissue. And so since now we are much, much more closer to the patient, request not only for the aesthetics also for maintenance and also you know for harmony generally speaking it's only soft tissue so what the patient see what the patient realize is not the bone exactly exactly it's a nice distinction from the fundamentals of implantology to actually now much more focus on the outcome what is driving this change patient but patient. What, how patient has because, the patient changed yeah, because patient was not happy at all about this outcome when only bone augmentation and implant placement was done Sometimes the, you know, the appearance of this implant is not like the patient is expecting because the patient has the other tooth, which is the natural one, and so the patient wants to see them as much as possible the same. And so the patient complains about the aesthetic outcome of implant therapy. And the problem was that not good enough soft tissue management was done. Exactly. So that's now the new insight that this, this complaints or this dissatisfaction has yes, been there? Beyond the limit is another story. The Tell beyond me. the limit is maybe by managing the soft tissue only, most of the time we don't need bone augmentation. So it's exactly the opposite, you know. Once upon a time, bone was a must. You have to increase the bone because by increasing the bone, you can improve the patient outcome which is not completely true in terms of patient, what the patient can see, because the patient cannot see the bone, obviously. 
can see only the soft tissue. And so we saw that there is many, many conditions in which only by managing the soft tissue, even if the bone is not ideal, we can give a very good outcome for the patient. Oh, very interesting. That's now, beyond. That is beyond, <laughs> and that's the novelty, Alexander. Um, that, what does it require from the dentist or implantologist to be beyond the bone augmentation and to be able to perform these kind of procedures? So uh, you need to understand the technique properly. So because you need to do procedures that can be predictable and that you can reproduce in any and every scenario. And also taking into account the, what you are using for your procedure, whether it is bone tissue or soft tissue, that it has to be something predictable, something that has been studied in the literature. In our field, I feel that uh, soft tissue isn't as documented, the stability in time. So that's why uh, hard tissue has been preferred because it has been considered more stable. It doesn't resorb, it stays there. But maybe uh, soft tissue isn't so far from that. So I think with a good clinical procedure protocol and obviously soft tissue management afterwards, that's crucial. What is the key success factor there? It's operator dependent, but it's also dependent on what you are using. So in this case, what I was saying Are you saying referring before, to materials? Materials. All right. Either autologous or, you know, bone fillers or whatever kind of material. And, and in terms of soft tissue, where are we with biomaterials for materials? You know, the, the, great, the great thing that was really unexpected is that we cannot speak only about stability. What is incredible, and we didn't know up to, let's say, 10, 15 years ago, is that the connective tissue graft, so the autologous tissue, is going to increase with time, not reduce. So it's not only a matter of stability, but if you see a patient and five years, 10 years later, the soft tissue is augmented. And there is also a biological concept behind this. While, you know, the bone is going to resolve, the previous type of connective tissue graft that was taken with a different technique was going to resolve, but the new connective tissue graft has the tendency to increase with time. So what is not perfect one year, maybe it becomes perfect in five or 10 years, but really it's improving. And this is something that only the tissue, the autologous tissue can give you, but some specific type of connective tissue that is taken with a specific technician, technique. The problem of biomaterials is the same of the bone or bone filler material that is going to resorb. Exactly. And so, you know, you cannot, we cannot yeah. think in terms of stability in the same. Obviously, we have to work a lot, but it's the research that has to work a lot in order to find the material that gets closer to the outcome that we can achieve with the, with the autologous tissue. We cannot say in big Congress that they work the same because it's not true. They don't. And, and what is the assignment for the research community? What, what type of research is mostly needed then now? I think that there is this need because we, we let's say, we spend a lot of time, <coughs> many, many years to improve everything about the bone. Mm -hmm. But I think that we didn't take, take care enough about what we can do to improve the soft tissue. So we just started. So it's a something that hopefully in some years will be much better, but now we are not close to the autologous. I, I think it, it should start with standardizing the type of graft that we're using, because as Professor was mentioning before, we have several sites and several techniques to graft tissue from the palate. And I think that once we understand which is the tissue that we need, the technique that works best. Because you do see differences in the clinic. There is, there is a very big difference because of how the layers in the lining of the palate are made. So mm -hmm. the components of each layer are different and they serve a different purpose. So uh, not every technique delivers the layer that we would like to have, which is the lamin appropriate, which is the best kind of tissue. And uh, so I think this is the base for future studies, standardized. Because if you look into the literature, each study has a different harvest procedure, a different harvest site, and you cannot compare results. Exactly. With and you not also kind of uh, collect and, and do yeah. uh, collective studies as well. So this is a call for standardization, I would both in the clinic and in the science. Well, yeah, yeah. I see you roll your no, eyes. I mean, I mean, that it's try to find something that is really getting closer to the Connective tissue graph, but also the connective tissue graph, as Alexander was saying, is different. You know, we have different uh, way of uh, behaving of this connective tissue graph in different patients, so it's not easy. Mm -hmm. to yeah, because that is what makes me curious. You said 
the soft tissue, the, the autologous soft tissue can actually increase. Mm -hmm. To what extent, especially if you say, well, this is an aesthetic driven procedure, is this predictable or can it just also increase out of hand? It's true, it's true. That's also a limitation. So now we have the opposite problem. Sometimes this soft tissue increases too much. Right. And so from an aesthetic point of view, it's not so good. And so I think that what will be very important is also to calibrate, you know. We use a technique to prepare this connective tissue graph that create different layers. So maybe if you have to make a papilla increase, maybe the thickness of the connective tissue here should be a bit greater because we need more increase with time. But for example, the other papilla is much better, so why do we have to make the same thickness? So we have to layer it a bit more. Mm -hmm. So it will be really details. Exactly, the details that make the perfection <laughs> and then I we're back on the theme. <laughs> I, I think that this title for soft tissue is really very, very true. Yeah, but I also hear you say this is all kind of unexplored ground. We still mm -hmm. need to find out how it works, standardize yeah. the studies. When, when, when you look into the future, what will you be working on personally? Because I just learned you're also uh, at Harvard now doing yes. uh, uh, research. What are you working on? So I'm doing a, a research fellowship on uh, implantology. So uh, right now my focus is to study the behavior of connective tissue and diff different techniques, also relating to the prosthetic components, to the implant um, macro how, how they interact. Yes, how they behave in time, because this is, we have so many techniques, what we need to learn now is how they behave in time and in different scenarios. So that's... But that's that's a huge endeavor. Where do you start? <laughs> Well, you start and then you go, <laughs> you start big and then you go specific. <laughs> exactly. Your first frustration is, oh, everybody does everything different. Let's make a call for standardization. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think what, uh, what Professor was mentioning before, Professor Sukeli, is that we understand that soft tissue doesn't remain stable in time, but not in the way that was thought before, that it's not stable, that it resorbs. It's not stable, that it grows. So we want to understand how does this grow, when does it grow, and does it depend on something that we are doing, or is it exclusively patient dependent, so that will give us and a lot of take the insight. advantage from this and not the disadvantage, that's mm -hmm. the more. Exactly, and that, that's where the calibration come, comes into peace. Can this only be studied in clinical studies, or is there also work to be done there's, ex vivo? There's, it's difficult. It's difficult because the palate is some unique characteristics in the patient and there is such a great variability also from patient to patient that I don't think there is any animal that makes, you know, any tissue that is similar enough to this. So yeah, because then we know how hard difficult. it is setting up clinical studies, getting yeah. enough patients, yeah. making them comparable. I have to tell you that I think that the, you know, the nightmare of taking the graph from the palate is one of the main reasons why bone augmentation was done so much mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. everybody considered this technique an invasive technique which is obviously true you know? yeah but today there is techniques and many many indication which is most of the indication for the clinicians that the type of graft that we take it's really painless at all not really at all so you know we have to consider that yeah we, when we make surgery you have to be minimally invasive not invasive at all it's impossible it's not mm -hmm. surgery mm -hmm. otherwise you, you don't have to do it so i think that we have to work on this but for sure there are many conditions in, in which if you want to manage the soft tissue you know that to get the best outcome you have to take a lot of tissue and this is not so Nice it's not ideal. No, in another episode of Let's Talk, uh, one of your co-chairs of the Congress, Massimo Simeon, was here, <laughs> and he That's also right. yeah. and he also mentioned. But this this pain is also super subjective. Yeah. Like this one patient will say, "Well, I'm in surgery anyway. If there's another site, mm -hmm. I'm fine." And the other one is like, "I've been dying for 15 days. Uh, I never want to experience yeah, this again." Uh, it's absolutely subjective, but it's also true. You know, I'm really working with the soft tissue, with this type of graph from, I, I cannot tell you how many years. And I have to tell you that if the, the outcome is good, the patient immediately forget. Yeah, they forget you, the two weeks of pain, yeah. Yes. If you ask them, you know, one year later or six months later, how was it, and they say it was good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was not good. Exactly, at the in, time the, of the, in the healing, pain. yeah. But when they see that the outcome is good, they say, 
And I think that the really the most invasive technique, the most invasive procedure for the patient is when something is not successful and you have to repeat it. Mm. That's exactly. really invasive. That's where the pain really starts. But it's, yeah, <laughs> the pain is psychological to start everything from yeah. the beginning, you know, yeah. that's invasiveness. Exactly, exactly. Well, very well redefined. Finally, final question to you both. What do you hope that the audience from the session will walk away with? What will, will you hope they take into the clinic next week? I hope there would be a better case selection to really consider if a case needs bone augmentation, if, it's, if the reason for bone augmentation is aesthetic reasons, maybe consider soft tissue grafting instead. So have both things because, of course, there will be scenarios where bone is needed. We're not against bone when it's needed. But when it's not, we are really against it. So. Exactly. Have that decision higher up in the decision tree yes. when making the you treatment try to plan. be very specific during the diagnosis. Exactly. Very clear for you, Giovanni? I have uh, an objective that is, uh, you know, most probably to today will not be enough to uh, achieve this outcome is that people should start to think in a different way. So to put the soft tissue in the right position first, which is something that the patient realized, and then see how much bone you need. And if you need to augment the bone, you augment the bone, not do the opposite, you know. Exactly. Bone augmentation in mini and then soft tissue management to repair the soft tissue problem that we had after bone augmentation. So, but this is really a big job. But I'm here it's for a, this. It's a big ambition. You're here for big ambitions uh, to go beyond this. the limits and flip the thinking. That's the truth behind the limit. Exactly. To make, you know, the people start to change the way of behaving. Exactly. Giovanni, Alexander, thank you very much for having so this much. talk with me. And I hope you are now just as curious as I am to go watch the full recording of this session. You'll see speakers Egon Ewe from Italy and Alexandra uh, Rendon from Mexico on stage. And the chairs will be Giovanni Zucchelli together with David Nissan. Thank you for watching and see you next time.